this is Victor from The Remote Lifestyle. Today I wanted to answer a question that I get a lot from aspiring digital nomads. How do you learn to code? This is the second video of a two-part series on learning to code for digital nomads. And in the last video, I answered the question, should you learn to code? In that video, I shared how coding has changed my life and why I believe that it's the number one bang for your buck skill to invest in yourself as a digital nomad. Click here to watch the video. In this video, I'm going to teach you step by step what to learn, how to learn, and where to learn it, all for less than $100. But before we do that, a little bit about me. I quit my job in February 2016 to become a digital nomad and to pursue my dream of being able to live and work from anywhere in the world. Now I run my own digital design agency called Tandem Designs. I have over three years of experience working as a front end developer, and my clients range from startups to Fortune 500 companies. And on the side, I work on my passion project the Remote Lifestyle, a blog and YouTube channel that teaches people like you how to become a digital nomad. In this video, I will show you how I learned to code and how you can too without breaking the bank. So let's dive into it. As we discussed in the last video, writing code or programming languages allows us to tell computers what to do. There are thousands of programming languages that allow us to create websites, applications, and software. And different languages serve different purposes. If you were to build a website, you would be using a different programming language than if you were building a mobile application. Web development refers to coding for the web. So think about it as anything you open up in a browser. Mobile development refers to mobile apps. In this video, we'll be focusing on web development. There are two primary types of web developers, front-end and back-end. If you're interested in building websites, then front-end development is the place to start. A front-end developer translate a design file into a website using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If you go down this path, you can expect a starting salary of around $50,000 to $60,000 a year in the United States. In contrast, the functionality and the interactivity of the website are built by the backend developer. If you want to build interactive websites that allow the user to log in, create an account, connect with friends, etc., then you'll want to focus on backend development and use more powerful programming languages to build your web application. Backend developers can expect a starting salary of around $60,000 to $70,000 dollars a year in the United States. But this depends on what language you decide to specialize in. Regardless of whether you want to be a front-end developer or a back-end developer, you're going to start with HTML and CSS. These two languages are the building blocks of all websites. HTML stands for a hypertext markup language, and it defines the structure of a website, which includes all the text content, the images, and links. CSS stands for cascading style sheets and it's responsible for making the website look the way it is by controlling the styles that you define on all your HTML elements. The reason why we start out with these two languages is because these are the essential building blocks of any website or web application. Not all websites are web apps, but all web applications are websites. So regardless of whether you go front-end or back-end, it's essential to know basic HTML and CSS. Now, one thing that you might not know is that HTML and CSS are actually not programming languages. HTML is officially a markup language, and CSS is a styling language. You can think of HTML and CSS as a Word document for your website. There are languages that are strictly used for layout and design purposes. If you want to learn HTML and CSS for free, I recommend checking out these two resources, Free Code Camp and Code Academy. If you're looking for the best of the best, my personal recommendations are Code School and Treehouse. These two websites feature a wide collection of online courses, and they were also the two websites that I relied on the most when I was learning to code. You can sign up for a two-week trial, and afterwards prices are $25 a month for both websites. As you're learning HTML and CSS, I recommend that you check out Team Treehouse's front-end development track, as well as Code School's HTML and CSS path. Once you've taken those courses, I highly recommend you take Tuts Plus's 30 Days to Learn HTML and CSS. In contrast to most online courses, this free course focuses on incredibly practical aspects of web development. It will introduce you to 1. Installing a text editor and learning how to configure your local development environment. 2. Taking a Photoshop image and converting that into a website. Those are my top picks for HTML and CSS resources. If you have any questions or need clarification on the topic, you should refer to the excellent guide written by Shay Howe called Learn to Code HTML and CSS. It is by far the best written resource that I've ever come across for learning HTML and CSS. 
I don't know Shay personally, but I can't thank him enough for putting together a resource like this. Lastly, if you have any other questions when you're learning, Google is going to be your best friend. Novice and expert programmers alike always refer back to Google whenever they have a question. If you run into a problem, there's a 100% chance that someone else in the world has as well. And you can find answers on websites like stackoverflow.com. Whew. The next language to learn is JavaScript. JavaScript is responsible for the behavioral and interactive elements of your website. See a pop-up alert on your website? JavaScript. See a form field indicate an error? JavaScript. Along with HTML and CSS, JavaScript makes up the third language that renders a website on your browser. JavaScript is also the first full programming language that people usually learn. It's becoming increasingly popular these days and can be used in both front-end and back-end development. Before we get into JavaScript resources, I also want to introduce you to jQuery. Without getting into too much detail, jQuery is a JavaScript library. This means that it contains a series of commands that allow you to run pre-written JavaScript code. This allows you to do some pretty powerful things without writing code from scratch. To learn JavaScript, I recommend going through Team Treehouse's entire JavaScript path. Code School also has a JavaScript path, and within that path, I recommend you to take the following courses. JavaScript Road Trip Part 1, Try jQuery, and the following two courses are optional. JavaScript Road Trip Part 2, and jQuery The Return Flight. Another solid alternative is Tuts Plus's 30 Days to Learn jQuery. This follows a similar structure to the 30 Days to Learn HTML and CSS program. Congratulations, you now have the skills of an entry-level front-end developer. Believe it or not, at this point, you've learned the basics. If you want to pursue front-end development, you can already apply for entry-level jobs available in the market. If you want to dive deeper into front-end development, the next step would be to learn JavaScript frameworks. This includes AngularJS, Backbone, Ember, or Node.js, but we're getting ahead of ourselves, so I'll talk about frameworks a little bit later. But if you're serious about pursuing front-end development, the best way is to get an entry level or junior level position at a company. The best way to learn is to get professional experience. Finding a company where you can learn the best practices and the tricks of the trade from more seasoned developers will really help you go a long way. For example, when I first graduated, I worked part-time as a junior front-end developer at a startup. My experience there gave me the skills and the confidence to apply for a full-time position at a 300,000 person company. And that's really where my career started taking off. Through my experiences at the large company, it gave me the skills and the practical business knowledge to eventually become a freelancer and run my own business. Whew. Now on to the back end. You now have a strong grasp of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but we're only scratching the surface. To summarize, the back end consists of three parts, a server, an application, and a database. And since I'm no expert on back end development, I will spare you the details. Back end technologies usually consist of languages like PHP, Ruby, Python, Java, and C++. As you start out, your goal is to learn the basics of your selected language. Luckily, the basics are similar across all modern programming languages. So since you've learned JavaScript earlier, you're going to find picking up these languages a little bit easier. The reason for that is because concepts like loops, variables, functions are pretty consistent across programming languages. Now on to web applications. So we know that backend development is about building web applications, and web applications are built using programming languages. Great! But there's one more thing you need to know. Most web applications are built using web frameworks. Don't worry, it's not that complicated. In a nutshell, web frameworks make it easier to build web applications. Remember when we learned jQuery? Web frameworks are similar things, and they help backend developers build out web applications more easily. Each web framework is typically built using one primary programming language. For example, Ruby on Rails is built using Ruby, and Django is built primarily using Python. It's important to note that there could be multiple web frameworks for a programming language. A good example is JavaScript. You have JavaScript frameworks such as AngularJS, Backbone, Ember, and React. Dedicated teams upgrade and maintain web frameworks over time, so that means that existing web frameworks are always changing. And on top of that, new frameworks are always emerging as people find better ways to do things. Like programming languages, different web frameworks have different strengths. You typically find Java or C++ frameworks being used in large enterprise applications. So we're talking really, really large companies. In contrast, many startups lean towards Ruby on Rails, Django, or a JavaScript framework. Based on my experiences in the industry so far, and based on what people have recommended, I would recommend you start out with 
Ruby on Rails, or Django. Ruby is often associated with the Ruby on Rails framework. It is super popular among startups and the tech scene. Ruby on Rails makes it very easy to transform an idea into a working web application. And many of your favorite applications are actually built on Rails. These include Twitter, Airbnb, Groupon, Kickstarter, and Hulu. Ruby on Rails is great for beginners because one, there's a huge online community of Rails users. Two, it's widely used in startups and in the tech industry. And three, compared to other frameworks, there are dozens more resources available for Rails. Rails is also the first framework that I learned. To learn Ruby on Rails, I recommend taking the following courses. Team Treehouse's Rails development track, Code School's Learn Ruby track, but most of all, you should check out the Ruby on Rails tutorial by Michael Hartle. It is the gold standard and the most commonly referenced Ruby on Rails guide. The book basically walks you through how you can build Twitter from scratch. Now on to Django and Python. Python is a general purpose language used for everything from server automation to data science. Django is a popular framework that powers websites such as YouTube, Dropbox, and Google. I'm less familiar with Django, but a good place you can start is Team Treehouse's Learn Django track. Lastly, I wanna talk a little bit about in-person resources. If you're somebody who feels like you might need in-person instruction, don't worry. There are so many classes that you can take to learn these skills. In fact, I learned Ruby on Rails at an in-person bootcamp. In-person instruction is especially helpful when you're stuck on difficult concepts because you can rely on your classmates and your instructor for help. However, due to the overwhelming demand for these types of boot camps, prices have skyrocketed in the last few years. Prices pretty much vary based on the time commitment for a class. For a three month full-time program, costs can be anywhere between $8,000 to $15,000. On the other hand, you can save costs by taking part-time classes. If you wanna spend your money wisely, I would recommend taking online classes until you run into a major roadblock. You should be able to cover HTML, CSS, and JavaScript without needing in-person instruction. Save the in-person classes for difficult concepts like backend development and learning different web frameworks. There's a great website called SwitchUp that lists the different coding boot camps out there so you can take a look at the pros and cons and the reviews for each one. And ultimately, practice makes perfect. Learning through taking classes is one thing, but applying what you've learned on actual projects is a whole different game. I highly recommend that you build side projects. Build websites and applications for your friends. Do whatever it takes to get more hands-on and practical experience on whichever programming language or framework that you choose. When I first started learning how to code, I made the mistake of taking every single track that was offered on Code Academy because I was all about getting the badges and learning all the coding languages. And in the end, I knew how to write HTML, CSS, Python, JavaScript, Ruby, but I had no idea how to build anything with the languages that I've learned, and it was a total waste of time. You're much better off sticking with one programming language and diving really deep into that. A word on timelines. As you are learning all of these skills, keep in mind that this takes time. You will not become a great developer in just a few months. In fact, you will probably not become a great developer after one year. But be patient. The learning process is full of ups and downs, so don't feel discouraged. You're literally learning a new language. No one becomes good at that in a short period of time. At the same time, you should realize that you get what you put into things. So therefore, the harder you work, the faster you will progress. And that's a wrap for my two-part series on learning to code for digital nomads. If you liked the video, support me by dropping a like. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel. Lastly, if you have any questions or comments, just put them in the comment section and I'd be happy to continue the conversation. And that's all from me and I'll see you next time.